I shall tell you a story. Some would say it is only a myth, but as you well know, all myths have elements of truth in them. This tale is not for the faint of heart. If you are, the journey we are about to embark on must be made without your company. Consider yourselves a ragged fellowship, for that is where this tale begins. Before they were considered West Worm, they were the first West Militia, an unruly band of men given to much war and fighting. With no place to call home, they fought amongst themselves and any who would oppose them. That was until he came to lead them. General D. Scoot, a leader of superb intellect and rapport, renowned as a gentleman yet possessing leadership unparalleled, even greater than William Wallace himself. He led them, and they followed full heart and body to his will. Over the years, they grew to love and cherish their leader. He trained them in the finest arts of war. Unmatched on the battlefield, many a family lost father and son who fell under their blades. Many enemies stood against them, and when all seemed lost, whether outmanned or outmatched, the horn of the west was blown, and never in those days or ones to follow could there be seen such a fine display of fury, fire, and gallantry. No! Come on! The years drew on, and both leader and men sought solitude and peace. So much war and blood had softened their hearts to long for a land to settle, and a home to call their own. They desired freedom from their past, and seize the day became their heart's cry. As their thoughts turned to a home, General Scoot embarked on perhaps the most dangerous of missions, to search out a home for these battle-worn comrades. Taking a small company to scout the uncharted lands of the West, he charged them to camp upon the training grounds and await his return. The days waxed and waned, yet they had no word from their beloved general. Patience and alertness moved to apathy and forgetfulness. The men of West Militia grew weary and moved to bickering and to break up. That is, until the day came, which would change their lives forever. From the enemy. Mm. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. To say, the general's captured. All the men are down. Rally the troops. Let's go. The death will not be in vain. Gentlemen, the, the general has been stolen by the men of East. We have to get him back. Gather the troops and let's get the weapons and prepare for battle. The time is now, okay. boys. The okay. time is now! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
You have violated the borders of East. And you have stolen our general. Give him back. All those who violate our borders must die. Anyone who steals the general must also die. Indeed. Prepare for war. should disband. Each man go forth to seek his own fortune. You did this to us. You did no, no, this to us. No, 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 Kleines Blümchen! And so, the men of First West Militia found a home, peace, and new friends called women. A whole new arena for the men of West, but nonetheless an exciting frontier. The life of the general cost them dearly, but in his death the ragged militia became a unified band of brothers. They became West One. Our journey, dear friends, has come to an end, but the general will live on in the hearts of those who reside in West One and in those who have heard this tale of West's beginning. You are charged to remember their story and take care. For who knows if by some circumstance the times which we live in may call for a remnant of the militia to rise again and meet its enemy with fierce resolution and renewed vigor.